Welcome to episode three of Disneyland Darlings, presented by Tales of a Disneyland cast member. I'm Lucy. And I'm Danielle. And we're ready to bring you a great show. <laughs> Indiana Jones turns 20 this year. The event featured a band. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, we're taking a caravan through the deserts, across the fields. Hut! What the heck was that? Sounds like a sick chipmunk. I heard a rattlesnake. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be careful. This is a very dangerous caravan. As we know, what that? It's an elephant. There's all kinds of weird things going on out there. But you never know what we may find on this musical caravan with Dr. Jones. Because we are the Jones family, ladies and gentlemen. With Saxy Jones on the sax. Give him a hand. Slidey Jones on the slide trombone. Slappy Jones on the bass. Very slappy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. our youngest brother, <laughs> Indy's favorite great, 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 great grandchild, Happy Jones. Take it, Happy. <laughs> but there's one idea that really stands out. So, I, and in particular, one of my favorites in this is the woman who really seems to like snake pits. Yeah, yeah she's a little too into it. So, let's take a look. If you were involved in any of the jokes on what would you expect that month? Oh, three pains. And slide. Horrible things happening. Okay. <laughs> I'd have to have that thing with the big rock rolling down the little chute. Snake. Um, <laughs> How about that big ball? That, that big rock? Yeah. You know that scene in the first Indiana Jones where that big huge ball is rolling down? I don't know. Well, it'd have to have snakes, bugs. So I threw one because the fast. big ball rolling after it. I like that big ball that comes after it in the first one. It's like snakes and all It's props and things that <laughs> roll at you and, and just really wild. Like the pretending things like you're going to go in a fire, but when you really go in it, it's gone. We'll have to have the snakes. 
<laughs> Enslaved children. Right. <laughs> Anybody else? No, that would be that would be for us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So bring the house lights up, please. So um, I need a show of hands. How many of you would have said big rolling ball? Come on, raise your hands really high. Okay. Okay, down. Thank you. Now, who would have who would have said enslaved children? <laughs> okay, now, now, for those of you that would have said enslaved children, keep your arms up. Higher. All right, security. Down. Down. All of them. A weird audience. Nobody in the last audience said enslaved children. <laughs> you worry me. <laughs> So, obviously, there was a lot of opinion of what an Indiana Jones attraction should be. Yeah, and, you know, early on in uh, the development of shows for the park, they give us carte blanche. They say, do what your wildest dreams can imagine, put it all out there. It's like being a kid in a candy shop. So we worked with Brian Jowers, the artist who stayed with us in this whole show, and this was Brian's first uh, pass at that. And it's very interesting if you look at it. We did throw in everything, literally. You can see the uh, troop transport that we ride on here. I've got to remind myself. Yeah, troop, not transport. to say the J word. Not deep. Yeah. Don't have a deal there, you know. Anyway, <laughs> I have a Jeep. I actually have a Jeep. <laughs> I can say that. It's right, my hold, Jeep. Hold, hold yeah. on. <laughs> I'm not talking about Disney. There's going to be a big red slip in Tim's mail tomorrow. Okay. So, in the... In the don't hiss. What? What was that? I'd like so, to point out something. No, no, hold on a minute. So in our last show, we had Paula Potter, a corporate lawyer, oh, in the audience. And we and managed not to say the J, J word. word. Okay. Yeah, so. right. I can talk about my G. I, okay. <laughs> okay. Just point out the stuff. Okay, so there is the troop transport, also known as an enhanced motion vehicle, technically. And, but also in this giant jumbo version of Indiana Jones, you can see the jungle cruise going through over here on this level. And where is a train when you need it? Uh, up here is the park railroad going through the middle of the show. And then one of the coolest things, we actually built this ride, but you have to go all the way to Europe to see it. And that is the little mine car ride with the loops in it going down through the lower area here. So there you have the super ultra deluxe version of Indiana Jones. It's, a, it's, it's the kitchen sink. Yeah. And they liked it. Everybody liked it. And they said, keep going, keep going, keep developing it. And so we did. So you even uh, engaged uh, one of the great legendary Disney Imagineers on this. Yes, we did. We were, like I said, all over in Paris working on the opening of Disneyland uh, Paris in 92. And Herbie Ryman, who did a lot of the work for us on that project, had finished doing his sketches. We were all now building it. And so he said, what am I going to do while you're all over there? And we said, uh, well, why don't you start thinking about Indiana Jones? And he goes, well, what is it going to be? And we said, we don't know yet, but come up with some great ideas. So here you can see some of the last pieces of art. Now, Herbie, Herbie had worked on the opening of Disneyland and the opening of every part of everything we've ever done, New Orleans Square. And so these are his uh, later drawings that he did. And I love the little uh, cart ride there because I think Herbie, being with Disney for so long, realized there's no way they're going to let them build a four-passenger cart. They're going to have to come up with something with more capacity. So he had already initiated that thought by jumping it up to about eight people. And, of course, we ended up with 12 in order to make it worth the while of investing that kind of money into something spectacular. But anyway, it was really neat to come home and find uh, these waiting for us. And it, it really did work as inspiring us all to go to the next step. And you were saying earlier that you went to a show yesterday at Walt Disney Imagineering. Yes. Imagineer. Tell if us about If you can that. sneak into the Imagineering, um, you know, no, 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 please don't sneak in. <laughs> sneak, not a good word here. Okay. If you can find somebody that works there that can get you in, we have an incredible exhibit of all the artwork. Uh, on display, we even have a full-size snake in the, in the lobby there and everything. It's really neat. Vanessa um, put that together and she's done a beautiful job of it. She did that great poster book um, for a Disney, uh, Disneyland poster. Anyway, so that opened yesterday and I was looking at all the art, but and there is some stuff in it that I hadn't seen in a long time, like Kali, we had the the heart scene in the ride. You guys remember that from the second movie? That? The, the thing know, the not heart. quite Disney, you know, so uh, that was... Yeah, not quite. Yeah. No. 
Um, so anyway, but there was that painting. I hadn't seen it in a long time, but we actually found some things here for you that aren't in the exhibit. Yeah, now tell us what this is. Okay, this is the first pass at the Fountain of Youth. We were beginning to toy around with, you know, people are gonna be waiting two hours in line. Is there any way we can promise the allure of some really amazing things? So we started thinking about what are some of the great mythical elements of, of time and whatnot that people would wait two hours in line to get. It seemed like the Fountain of Youth. I, I would sure like some of that right now. Um, would be a great one. So this was, Again, Brian Jowers, his first pass, and the artists love to sneak things in, so if you look way up here again, you can see Indy looking down from where he's discovered the Fountain of Youth, and over here is Ponce de Leon's uh, Spanish Conquistador helmet. These were all found by Alex Williams, who put this show together, and like, he was saying, did you see that? I said, no, I've seen that thing for 20 years, and I never noticed all those other Little Easter eggs. Stuff. Yeah, Easter eggs. Like our DVDs. Right? That's right, yeah. that's right. And we have another image here that's kind of like that. Yeah, and this one is interesting. This is another of Brian's Jowers. It kind of, Brian Jowers' pieces. It kind of combines the thuggies from the second film with uh, the plant and the setting the temple into disaster that Andy did in the first film. But what it also did is really got us um, aware of the thing that we were starting to create a book report where you go in and you sit there doing nothing while Indy does his thing. And uh, for me, the best ride when I was a child coming to Disneyland was Peter Pan, because the minute you board that boat, you hear Peter say, come on everybody, here we go. And then it's all about you engaged in everything from that point out, uh, on, flying out the window, flying over London. And it's happening to you and because of you. So this was really kind of instrumental in saying, we've got to find a way that the cause of all the things that happens in this ride is the guests, rather than watching Indy do his thing. And this is where um, this is where you, you latch onto the idea of engagement, of, of yeah. compelling people. Yeah, it's a lot. It, it's akin to uh, it's like the early version of Midway Mania. Well, you know, in interactivity was the buzzword that was starting to become, and is still with us today. But it's real easy to do it when you're one-on-one, -on -one, like say, at home with a video game or in Midway Mania where it's you and the target, but where you've got 12 people, it's anarchy, you know, with everybody going, no, I wanted it to go this way. So we had to settle for unpredictability as our buzzword rather than um, interactivity. So it's an unpredictable ride and, you know, as you know, it does a lot of different things, uh, but it's not technically interactive in, the, in that right. sense. Let's take a look at the models, because the models are incredible. Yeah. So tell us about this model behind Okay, you. we had uh, a lot of various models that went on, and then this was very early on. This is about an eighth inch scale, so you'd be about that tall if you're walking around in there. Um, Bob Berenick is working on this. This is still where we were told, keep spending, it's wonderful, it's lovely. This is the Jungle Cruise, about where the bathing pool of the elephants currently is, and we re- it created that section so the boat can be a jump Also in 1130 showing of fantastic. Next week we will be doing a giveaway. It's going to be pretty exciting featuring the new Disneyland tumblers. Also, as I mentioned on the vlog, I was accepted into the Disney College program for Disneyland. After some consideration, I decided to take it. Basically what we're trying to say is... Disney College program folks in Disneyland style. Hopefully I will continue to update everyone on that. I will be posting uh, my interview process, how I applied, and what other steps any of you would like to know. Um, if you have any questions about the Disney College program, don't hesitate to ask. We are currently trying to access tables and Disneyland cast members. We are currently remodeling and going through a lot of changes. So I appreciate your patience as we begin on this fabulous journey to making a magical place on the internet. Well, I'm Danielle. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, comment, like, or share this wonderful video. We're glad to bring you this great Disney news. We also just want to say thank you for everyone and your support of this new vlog. And we, it encourages us to continue on making these videos. Hope you enjoy them. Thank you and good night from Anaheim, California. <laughs>